Hello everyone, Pally Tubby here. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are doing well today. In today's video, we're gonna learn how to play Ari. Whether you're just picking up the character or need a refresher, I'm gonna try to go over the basics, show you the runes you need, the items you need, and explain all of your abilities as best I can. After this, we're gonna be jumping into a match so you can see all of it in action. Remember to use the timestamps down below to skip around to your heart's content. Let's start with our passive. This is Essence Theft. Basically, all this means is every nine minions that die for the enemy team nearby Ari, she's going to be healed for some health. The amount of health she gets back actually scales with ability power, so it will improve as the game progresses. There is also some healing from enemy combatants, enemy champions dying, but you have to damage them within three seconds of their death to gain that benefit. Our Q ability is the Orb of Deception. This is a straight line skill shot on a very short cooldown that deals damage in both directions. It'll go out and then return to you. On the way away from Ari, this is going to deal just normal magic damage. But on the way back, this is actually going to deal true damage to everyone that the orb hits. Meaning you can bypass some of your enemy's defenses just by using your Q ability. Our W ability is Fox Fire. We are going to release three missiles that just kind of auto seek out nearby enemies. It's also going to give us a boost to our movement speed as well. This is great for getting out of some sticky situations. Our E ability is Charm. This does a small amount of damage, but more importantly, CCs the target for 1.2 seconds when you first pick it up, advancing all the way to two seconds once you fully max out your E ability. Now this does not pierce targets. It will simply charm the first enemy that you hit. In this case, they're standing still, but what will actually happen in normal games is the enemy champion will walk towards you. This gives you a lot of time to line up the rest of your abilities for some big burst damage because they're forced to just stand still. And finally, at level six, we unlock Spirit Rush, our ultimate ability. This allows us to dash up to three times on a single charge and deal damage to nearby enemies, very similar to the way that Foxfire does by just sending out missiles at targets. However, if we get a kill while using Spirit Rush, it will give us additional charges up to a cap of three. So you do have to like actually be using them. So let's say we have a target that we want to deal a lot of damage to. Our full combo involves all of our abilities. We're gonna ult in to get in range, use our W to deal damage to enemies nearby, use our E ability to lock down that target to keep them from moving, and of course, use our Q at the same time. That was the slow version. This is what it looks like at full speed. Remember, this is R, W, E, Q, all at once. And I even threw an ignite in for good measure. And let's not forget, we still have additional dashes that we can pile on some damage with as well. Ari can be lethal at a moment's notice. But with her trait, with her passive, she also has really good sustain in lane. Can run a little heavy on mana, but don't you worry, we have items for that. The two most common starters are a Doran's Ring with two health potions, or you could also go for the Corrupting Potion if you're looking to trade with enemies a little bit more. Personally, I think if you're new to Ari, I would always recommend getting the Doran's Ring. It just makes last hitting even easier. Our main mythic item that we're building towards is the Everfrost, and this is actually going to be incorporated into our main combo throughout the game. Although there are some people that are seeing success with Luden's Tempest as well. The main difference between these items is Everfrost is going to give you big ability power bonuses, as well as a lockdown if you land the skill shot. Where Luden's Tempest is a passive item, you don't have to worry about it at all, and it's going to be giving you magic penetration on everything else that you build. I personally go for Everfrost in today's game, so we're going to take that right now as well. The two most popular boots for Ari are the Sorcerer's Shoes as well as the Ionian Boots of Lucidity. In most cases, in fact, in 75% of games, Sorcerer's Shoes are the go-to choice. The next most successful item for Ari is the Shadow Flame, but I want to stress that you kind of need to build this early because this is flat magic penetration. You need to use this to snowball. 
And rounding off our starting items, feel free to build whatever you want after this to fill out your item slots. We're going to get Zonia's Hourglass. Not only does it give ability power, armor, and ability haste, it also has the option of making us immune to damage entirely. Disclaimer with these items, uh, I'm going based off of statistics. I don't, I don't mind if you have a different build for Ari. More power to you. Get out there and slay with it, dude. So now that we have our full kit, let's see what our combo looks like. We just need to weave in that Everfrost. So how we're going to do it is actually extending our crowd control duration here. So we want to wait for the charm to be over. Dash in WE. When we think it's over, we also land the Everfrost. And oh no, they're dealing too much damage. Well, we can just immune that if we need to. And we could even save a dash to then get away from them. We have that option with the mobility. As far as runes go for Ari, this setup is used in 80% of matches right now. We're going to be focused on the domination tree, picking up the keystone for electrocute. Hitting a champion with three separate attacks or abilities within three seconds deals bonus adaptive damage. We are going to be using this all of the time. Ari gets so much value out of Electrocute just in the nature of how her ultimate and her W deal damage. And the fact that your Q can deal damage twice, all you have to do is weave an auto attack in here and there while you're spamming your abilities and you will Electrocute your enemies. To support this, we're getting Taste for Blood, Eyeball Collection, and Ultimate Hunter. For our secondary, we're picking the Sorcery Tree and getting the Mana Flow Band as well as Transcendence. For our bottom runes, I went for attack speed. That's the most often picked choice. I think you could do adaptive force, no problem, in both of these slots. And for your bottom one, you want to pick the mitigation for the opponent you're going up against. If they have an AD assassin in the middle lane, get some armor. If they're a mage, get some magic resist. But are you ready to see all of this in action? Let's jump into the game. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves in the Summoner's Rift today. The friendly team is Gwyn in the top lane, Warwick in jungle, myself on Ari in mid, and then an Aphelios and Thomas Kench bottom lane. <laughs> the enemy team is Yone top. Let me go ahead and buy my items. Rammus in the jungle, which is super scary. Vex in the middle lane, which is super scary. And then a Tristana. Shaco combo down for the bottom lane. At level one, we are gonna put a point into our W first. Allow us to move around, deal free damage, but of course, more importantly, proc the electrocute much, much, much easier because this sends out a bunch of really small attacks rapidly. Because of that interaction, Ari's actually super capable of dueling early on. And hopefully we don't get run over by the enemy team's Vex. Like I said, that can be a pretty scary character to go up against. I believe Vex gets passive stacks every time someone uses a dash nearby, which means my ultimate would be triggering that like crazy. So we'll try to keep that in mind after level six. Up in the top lane, it looks like Gwyn and Yone are going at it. Gwyn currently in the lead, but that might start to change as that wind buff builds on Yone. And eh, it seemed like it went just fine. Okay, so our goal today is going to be to win our lane the best we can. I typically play mid lanes that uh, farm quite a lot, but Ari is very capable of roaming extremely well. Vex coming out of the gate, swinging with that long range skill shot that just nailed me, unfortunate. So what I'm going to try to do is push my lane out when I can, but if the jungler is nearby and the jungler is doing something, we'll try to help them out in any way that we can. So it's a bit more of a controlled roam, maybe a little selfish way of playing, but I don't want to give up farm if I don't have to, because getting CS, getting this money is the most reliable way to win games, game after game. You're not always going to be able to roam and get ganks. Now, it's going to be a minute or two before our jungler gets moving. It looks like our Gwen has died twice up top. She died, teleported back, and then was defeated again. Notice I'm playing pretty passively here. I am trying to respect the Vex, but once we get closer to level three, that might start to change. Unfortunately, those long range minions getting under that tower are not doing me any favors. Her passive is full, so we want to avoid her for the time being. But now that it's gone, we can start to trade a little bit, giving myself a speed boost and throwing our Q out. Unfortunately, not connecting. Thomas Kinch picking up a kill on Tristana down in the bottom lane. That's perfect. Our Warwick is in the jungle 
above us. We'll try to play around that if we can. Mainly what I mean by that right now is just I want to stay on this side of the lane. I want to ward this side of the lane. Because if anything bad happens, Warwick is going to be my scapegoat. He's the guy we are going to run to. Now, I do want to trade more than what I have been doing. But as you can see, Vex is just sitting so far back and being so obnoxious to deal with. But there we go. We land the charm. We get the electrocute. And then we back up to get our CS perfect. If we can just keep doing that, keep routing towards or dealing damage and then backing up to safety, we should be fine this game. Warwick just cleared his red, so he might be looking for a gank. He might be looking to get Scuttle. He's scouting River right now. Again, we're just going to stay on his side. We see Vex using her po- Oh my god, that ability. We see Vex using her potion, trying to get up to a full health bar. So we're going to do the same. We're going to mirror that. Warwick still... I mean, he's probably going to go top. I think we're on our own for the time being. And that's fine. Looks like the enemy team does have a three kill lead on us at the moment, though. Vex starting to get low on mana, so maybe we can be a little aggressive here. She does have her traits. Not anymore, she doesn't. And she doesn't really have much to trade with now that she's ran out of mana as well. As long as I don't take too much minion damage here, we should be totally fine. Let's just move up and poke at her a little bit. There's the electrocute. Perfect. Just apply a little pressure when we can. Likely going to be backing after this. I want to make sure we avoid any Ramus roams, which we're starting to be pretty low on health. That might start to be a little desirable for him. And of course, Ramus can appear at a moment's notice from anywhere. Let's not sleep on that. So pretty passive start to this game. Uh, kind of sucks because normally I feel very confident trading into our opponent, but it looks like that wasn't in the cards for me, at least at the start. Hopefully we can gain some momentum in another way. Uh, if she gets level six, there's nothing she can do without getting some mana first, but I'm just gonna go ahead and back now. And it looks like she's doing the same. So the lane should more or less freeze here in the middle. Actually might be pushing towards me a small bit. What I want to buy is two amplifying tomes if I can. Never mind, let's just get one, some boots, and a dark seal, and one potion for the road as well. The dark seal is going to give us a stacking ability power bonus if we get kills and assists in the game, which we are striving to do. And the boots are going to let us get back to lane faster, hopefully faster than the enemy team's Vex. We do see a kill happen in the top lane. Warwick still continuing to go in versus Rambus, who's only level three. Gwen jumping in with those scissors you know you're not supposed to run with those but she ends up picking up a kill on that armadillo and just like that she's two and two that looks a lot better than zero and two as vex returns to lane we'll go ahead and match her warwick is recalling and his blue is up in 50 seconds so we can assume that soon he'll be on our right and we'll play that side of the lane instead Good Q right through the middle of the minion wave. Actually cleans it up pretty nicely. Uh, Vex should be ahead of me on XP, I think. Never mind. Here we go. Level six. We could jump in and try to do something fun. Catching her with our... Nice. Got the flash. Perfect. Do we go back in and try to do anything else? I don't think so. Just using my ult right away to try to get some aggression down. Let's ward on our right because that's where Warwick is. And we want to play towards this side of the lane. Uh, she does have a lot of mana, unfortunately. Did she bring potions? I'm not sure. We'll just try to last hit with our auto attacks if we can. Uh, I want to conserve whatever mana I do have. Now, we do become a lot more mobile at level 6, but our ultimate at the beginning of the game does have a pretty long cooldown. So it's not going to be something that I'm able to use all of the time. Uh, Warwick was looking at Dragon. Looks like he was dewarding it a little bit. We might be able to move up and do something fancy versus this Vex. At the very least, we can try to zone her out a little bit. She's playing super far back. She's scared of our potential, and honestly, she probably should be. But we can use that to our advantage by trying to keep her away from the majority of her farm. Until, of course, she steps a little too close, and we hit her with the entire combo, taking her down, pushing this into tower, and then roaming to help our Warwick, who's run into a little bit of trouble, using his ultimate 
then on Ramus, he does secure that kill without my help. Vex respawning in two seconds. So we want to push this lane in fast. We want this lane to clash against this tower, delete as much of this XP as we can from her, and then I'm going to recall and get some items. Friendly team is going in on Dragon, but the enemy jungle is dead. The enemy mid is re returning to lane. Bottom lane is returning to lane. So I don't feel like they really need me there. We're going to pick up a Lost Chapter, which is going to give us Mana Bank every time we level up. Of course, with our trait, we have great health sustain, which is why I'm not necessarily going in on a refillable health potion, and I haven't used these potions yet. But Lost Chapter is basically going to make up for our mana costs and return that mana to us every time we level up. I'm going to let him know I'm on the way. I don't want him to take all of my CS. Uh, looks like he's just skimming a little off the top. That's okay. Uh, we do have our ultimate. Vex just used her main form of crowd control to keep me back, but she does hit me with that long range poke yet again. Uh, if we're gonna do anything, we're gonna need to thin this wave out first, which we can start to do with our Q. Actually thinning it out very quickly. We're kind of on the pushing side of this lane yet again. I'm gonna skill up my W next, missing that cannon, unfortunately. Just try to poke at her with our Q, actually hitting her at max range there, doing some pretty good damage. Uh, Yone for the enemy team diving behind top tower. Looks like Warwick is roaming up for it now. That's, again, I want to help him. That's a little far, a little too far for me. We'll keep looking for opportunities. Might be able to catch Vex with a charm here, but with it being so close to tower, it's a little more sketchy. Warwick is above us, so let's ward above us. No sign of Ramus. Normally when there's a Ramus on an enemy team, they like j literally just sit on top of me. I can't do anything. We're at 67 CS right now, which believe it or not is a little below where I should be, but we're massively ahead of the enemy team's Vex at the moment, which is something I'm pretty happy with. Uh, she just used a lot of shit. We're gonna dash in, ignite, and secure that kill with a few quick casts of our ultimate, just using it close by to get that extra burst damage. And it just took that. It just took that momentary lapse in her moving up a little bit too far, and we were able to capitalize on it. Ramus for the enemy team, moving in, does not snipe the objective, tries to roll away, but our Warwick catches him, and we go in and help secure that kill as well. That's giving us a thousand gold right now as our affiliate. Leo's picks up a double kill in the bottom lane. Looks like a lot of people on this team are liking the lanes that they got, huh? Uh, Rift Herald is being dropped in the middle lane. Let's try to push in with that. Warg tried to take our cannon, but we were just too fast. Uh, as Vex reappears, we might be able to poke at her a little bit, but it, maybe it's in my best interest to just try to get the tower down first. We are at a level, level nine, where our Q does kill those ranged minions really, really easily. Shaco trying to come in to support this tower. We see Ramus for the enemy team reinforcing as well. Suddenly this is a 1v3, so it's something that I'm gonna back up from. But as you can see, our mana is totally fine. Our health comes back naturally. We really don't have to worry too much as long as we're playing somewhat reserved. Uh, Vex does have her ultimate, haven't seen her use it yet. Uh, and she just used all of her abilities on this lane. So we can move up and at least poke her a little bit. That Q doing pretty good damage as it flies out. Uh, Warwick is beneath us, so let's ward here. Try to keep eyes on the river as best we can. Again, these wards are kind of inadequate versus Ramus typically. Uh, he would just kind of show up and be on top of you. But for whatever reason, he's being pretty docile towards me in the middle lane. He is level six now. So his gank, th the gank threat of Ramus is much, much higher now that he's leveled up. Vex does hit us with a little bit of poke. That was looking pretty good. I might try to go in on her right now, using our ult to get in. There we go, big burst damage. And as she tries to dip away, we're just going to die under tower. <laughs> oh no, dude, that was so close. I wasn't expecting the shield there. I mean, clearly all I was trying to do was get a free ride back to base. Oh, you know, I actually don't have a B key on my keyboard. So the only way I can return is 
Oh, that's unfortunate. We don't have teleport to get back to lane, but we do finish our Everfrost, our mythic item that most Aries are building for these days. The reason you want this is because it's giving you the legendary bonus of extra ability power, but we can also lock enemies down by using the item. It like slows and roots everything at a frontal cone in front of us. Um, because our Q does true damage on the way back. That's why I think, or one of the reasons I think that this item is more popular for Ari. You could also build the Luden's Tempest if you want just more uh, magic pen. We are gonna get some magic pen with the rest of our setup here pretty soon. So that would have some synergy with the rest of our build. All right, we gave Vex a little bit of money. I don't wanna do that again, but I don't want her to get overconfident here either. So we're gonna move in right away, hit her with a nice Q and start things off on my terms. At least I hope. And still get that cannon. Uh, looks like Tristana for the enemy team was taken down. Warwick diving deep in the bottom lane still, though, as that Shaco trap does keep him under tower a little bit longer than I bet he anticipated. We picked up a control ward because I assumed we'd be going for Dragon soon. Looks like Warwick is moving into the area as well. Our charm counts as a stun or, a, you know, crap control, so we can remove the armor from that scuttle really, really easily. And notice while I was gone, uh, we returned to lane before any of those minions actually died. So we still grabbed all of that XP. We did miss out on a couple CS. Man, she's reading me well. I keep thinking I'm juking in a way she won't expect, but she's doing all right. Tristana and Shaco potentially moving in on our bottom lane here as they did just return to lane. Dragon is still open for the taking. Looks like Warwick is thinking about moving in on it now. Let's just help him with it. Vex is missing from middle. We should be aware of that. And we are missing out on that minion wave there. Shaco and Tristana just beneath us as well, but they seem preoccupied. And it looks like this is gonna go just fine. So as this is about to, whoa, Ramus, almost on time, my dude, almost there. Uh, I believe this is the real one. So let's try to kill him, perfect. Now Tristana for the enemy team is doing a lot of damage. We're gonna get behind her, use our Everfrost and try to lock her down with our Ignite. We have enough damage to make it happen and the friendly team picks up the kill on Ramus under tower as well. This is looking like a really easy opportunity to get this tower down and allow our bot lane to start to roam around the map a little bit easier. That also puts 200 gold directly in my pocket, which is where I like my money to be. Uh, I am going to push one more wave down here before roaming somewhere else. Looks like Vex is still shoving mid. How's our CS compared to her? She's still 33 behind us. And we have three kill, one death, and three assists at the moment. So our control ward is still holding strong here. Uh, the enemy Ramus did ward down into the pit, but I don't think that's a problem. We see Shaco for the enemy team kind of scurrying around. Uh, Vex will have her ultimate, and I'm surprised she doesn't have more of a level lead, but I guess we did participate in some kills. Uh, friendly team starting to move forward. Thomas Kench is going to give me the... I know his name's not Thomas. <laughs> For the record, I just want to say that. I know that. It's kind of an inside joke. Uh, but if we let you in, then you're on the inside too. Ramus has a lot of armor and probably shouldn't be the target that I'm going after. But really, my goal in this fight is to simply walk away. That has to be the Shaco decoy, and indeed it is. So if we take that down, his ultimate is basically wasted. We don't have a ton of mana, but our ultimate's coming off cooldown soon, and I would like to use it if I can. Vex steps up and takes a bit of damage there. We see a Shaco trap just underneath Vex. I think she's trying to bait me onto it. And Ram is potentially doing a little bit of damage up towards Rift Herald, uh, where it seems like we might be rotating towards now. Warwick is securing it at the moment. The enemy team in the area, but don't seem aware of what's going on. If we want to engage in that, we could. However, I'm going to try to cut Vex off at the pass. Dashing in, unfortunately not quite dealing enough damage. Uh, as Tristana jumps over the wall, I tried to root her in place with the Everfrost, but she does secure that kill. Friendly team still in a spot where they can be impactful here if things go well. Wow, we were deep in the enemy jungle over on this side. Aphilius moving into the lane. This is a character I want to learn at some point. He seems really ridiculous, just swapping weapons all of the 
time. Well, we have a lot of money to spend. Let's start to spend it. Magic penetration on our boots is going to make our damage hurt even more. We're also going to start to look into building the Shadow Flame. This is better in the early game because it takes a flat percentage, or excuse me, it takes a flat amount of the magic pen away from our enemies. So for instance, right now, if we look at my own defenses, I have 49 magic resist. If I attack someone with a shield, it's gonna be taking 40 of that away. And what you know, <laughs> Vex has a shield. We're gonna be hitting her quite hard. Well, Warwick does run to the middle lane and drop that Rift Herald, and he's jumping in on Vex right away as well. That tower is not there to protect her. Does it matter? Ooh, Ramus for the enemy team poking out of the woods as well. Maybe I shouldn't be going this way by myself. Warwick actually dipped off into the other direction. Uh, this lane is pretty sketchy to push at the moment, but kind of everything on the map is kind of sketchy to push at the moment. Dragon's going to be up in a minute 10. I think I'm just going to roam with Warwick and try to help him as he's moving around the map. He, of course, is very capable of killing enemies. Is he going to jump under tower? Yes, he is. So we're going to join him using our ultimate to get into position. And then our Q finishing the job. Vex for the enemy team is starting to mobilize yet again. I'm going to use a couple charges of my ult just to get behind her potential escape. I didn't get any p kill participation, but if she did run away, I would have met her in the field of battle. 38 seconds on Dragon. Uh, let's get middle pushing in. We want our lanes pushed out as far as possible to give us as much time on the objective as we need. Think of this as a ticking time bomb. The enemy team can either come to Dragon and stop us, or they could potentially lose their tower to minions here. Unfortunately, we might be losing our jungler here as this fight continues under the bottom lane buildings. Tristana jumping in. I'm kind of in a bad spot all of a sudden. They don't know I don't have my ultimate though. Charm into Tristana over the wall. We hit her with the ignite as well and that's gonna be a kill. The only thing I could have done better is land that Everfrost in there as well for some extra damage and rooter in place. But at the end of the day, we didn't even need it. I'm gonna ping Dragon, I'm on my way. We're also gonna drop that ward in the bush behind us. Warwick is level 12 to the enemy Ramus. Uh, ooh, what's that? Oh, it's, it's Thomas Kinch to the enemy Ramus is level 10. So our team is very, 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 very far ahead this game. How are we doing on our item completion? We only need 400 more gold to get that done. And then we're gonna be hitting quite, quite hard, quite hard. Once this dies, I might want to look into pressuring red buff here. We see three members of the enemy team on the minimap recently. Ramus is going for it right now. Let's go ahead and root him in place. I'm going to use my ult to dive forward as well. Remember, we're trying to do damage to him using my flash to jump in front of his path as well. All that means is that he's not going to have anywhere to run. He has to spin up and then when he hits a target, he stops and he stuns that target. Well, if we can get in his way, he's not going anywhere. Clearing that lane to get it under tower. We have enough money for our item now, so I'm just going to back right here. Aphilios doing good damage to that bottom structure. Um, perfect. Nothing else to buy. Let's head straight up. Work is going for that blue buff. I wonder if he would be so kind as to give that to me, but I'm not going to ping it. We're kind of too far away. I don't want to mess up his flow or anything. We have five stacks on our Dark Seal right now, so that's going really well. I highly recommend that you just kind of buy this item on any AP, to be honest with you. Because at any moment, you could have a phenomenal fight where all of a sudden you leave that fight stacked as a motherfucker. Warwick going in on the back line does take down the enemy team Shaco. We see Ramus trying to duel in here, and it's, it's simply not going well for him. Using his ult to try to get away, but that tower's not going to save him as Gwen Gap closes directly on top of him. We have arrived a little late for the party, but that's okay. With a few auto attacks and the help of Gwen, we should be able to get this tower down before those minions die. And now, all of a sudden, we have tier 3 structure pressure in every single lane on the map. Trisana taking that true damage as the orb returns to me. I wonder if I can catch her off guard. Let's see. There it is, dude. There it is, dude. There it is. 
<laughs> no, that burst damage is kind of a big thing. Now, we do have a few charges on our ult if we wanted to keep using it, but this is looking like a fight we're very outnumbered in very quickly. I might be able to rotate middle and push this in, but I have a feeling they're going to be right behind me on this rotation. Thomas is with us, though, so... Hey, everybody's fine. Gwen's moving up towards Baron. I don't think that's going to be a good idea for us to take right now or anything. Uh, Ramus looking for a target in the jungle, and he's going to find it, running into our Aphilios. Warwick jumping over that wall. Let's try to just use our Everfrost in here and slow everybody down if we can. The decoy from Shaco does do some damage. I'm not going to be able to catch up with Ramus here, but Aphilios is doing some bullshit. He's just attacking across the screen. <laughs> I really should learn that character at some point. Uh, rather than continuing to roam around the jungle where there's nothing to do, we're going to jump back into lane and just get this pushing yet again. I always want to be applying pressure to the enemy team whenever possible. However, this fight is not over. Five seconds left on our ultimate ability, and I'm seeing a Tristana that's very low. I don't even get the, the joy of participating. I don't even get that. We're going to ult in, charm the enemy team's Vex, hit her with the Everfrost as well. And there's the Q, there's the Ignite, isn't enough? I got another charge. <laughs> as we pick up that kill just under tower. Okay, keep this lane pushed, keep the pressure on. Let's use our ult again. I mean, it does damage to minions too, right? Uh, actually, with Yon moving forward, we're in a bit of trouble. I do land the charm, but as he dashes in, we take two much damage. Looks like Thomas is going to be able to get out, though. Our next item should be no surprise. It's a staple on a lot of APs, especially in the middle lane. We're going to start to build his own use hourglass. Not only does this let us use a stopwatch, allowing us to become immune to damage at the press of the key, but it's also going to be giving us really nice ability power bonuses, good armor defenses, and ability haste as well. Not that ability haste is something we desperately need. We're getting a lot of that from our runes, but it does help out. The decoy from Shaco chasing down Gwen. The fear lands on the ground and she is taken down as Yone tries to continue the chase. Tom Kent's just getting out of there by the skin of his teeth, but the enemy team Shaco is not done. I'm running down middle lane, but I'm very, very far away. I imagine this guy will be able to get out of here. No problem though. 30 seconds on the next dragon. We've claimed all of them. No reason to stop our streak now. Warwick is 9-0-5 with 206 CS. He is doing extremely well for himself. Uh, I want to get some wards down in the enemy team's jungle just to have an idea of where they are when we're going for this dragon. So we're going to put one rather deep there. Try to catch this enemy's Tristana using our Everfrost to root her after that charm lands as well. And that's the full burst combo. We just literally annihilated her. And there wasn't too much she could really do other than jump faster. You just have to have a slightly quicker reaction time. Enemy team's red buff is coming up right now as well. We'll work in the area. Is he going to go for it or is he looking for a Ramus kill? The friendly team is on boss. Uh, I think it's in range for me to hit. Shaco's moving towards me. Maybe we can catch someone in the jungle here. Oh, unfortunately. Oh, I thought that was one of his traps. I backed up immediately. It was just a ward. Warwick is going in. We could dash in if we want. I don't think I need to just yet. Still considering it. Not sure which one of these is the real Shaco at the moment. I'm playing this really cool. No reason for me to be aggressive here. Our team is frontlining really, really well. And we should just be taking our pot shots when we can get it. However, now that they're pushing out a little bit more, maybe that's a little more appealing. Charm on Yon should take him down. Yes, indeed it does. We can jump in now. Oh, there's a trap. <laughs> right under the tower. There's nowhere for you to go, Tristan. There's nowhere you can hide. And our Aphilios takes down the enemy team, Shaco. Let's get this building down. I've been down here enough. I'm ready to claim this real estate. Uh, Ramus is respawning, and Ramus can theoretically kill us, especially if he's rolling forward. But instead, going for the top lane, that buys me a lot of time. That tower's down. Do I stay? Uh, he's in Everfrost range. That's the route. Okay, we take it. We take it. Our ring is fully stacked. I need to make sure I protect these stacks and try to get out of here. 
Uh, Warwick is currently running down middle lane, though, so we might continue our escapades here. Gwen joining us as well. I'm going to push in top tower. Try to get that. Uh, it's probably overkill. I don't need to be that cautious. Uh, Shaco decoy is the one in the back. Or the this one. This one's the decoy. He's the real one. The one in the back. Uh, we can catch him here with Everfrost. Charm. Ignite. Perfect. Um, with Vex that close to the building. I want to... Oh, God. If we charm Ramus as he's moving in, that will also break his uh, roll forward, I believe. But this game is over. Yeah! I'm definitely going to GG our Warwick. Uh, we'll say uh, great shot calling on that one. That guy played exceptionally well. We lock in the S minus in today's game. I feel great about that. And as far as damage done, we were right up there with the best of them. By the end of that match, we ended up being 5,000 gold ahead of the enemy team's Vex. Even though she got 123 CS and I only got 156, it was all of that kill participation from being aware of our surroundings that really paid off in the end. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please make sure you hit that thumbs up button. We're going to take a look at more characters in the future, so if you want to come along for that ride, make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you guys again soon.